Hey, welcome to iLecture Online. Now we're going to talk about X-ray diffraction. You may wonder how in the world did we figure out all those various packing schemes and ways in which crystal structures form, how they're structured in various different ways in those cubic patterns. How did we figure out the separation distance from, uh, of the atoms and the ions? Well, it was all done through what we call X-ray diffraction. The way that works is we send the beam of X-rays down upon a crystal structure. The first layer of atoms in the structure will, will scatter out and reflect um, X-rays, and then some of the X-rays will go through the second layer, and the second layer atoms will reflect the X-rays and scatter the X-rays and so forth. And so when we have two beams of X-rays, one scattered out of the first electron, and one, uh, or atom I should say, and one scattered out of the second atom in the second layer, notice that if the two beams were in phase when they approached, since the second beam has to travel a greater distance than the first beam, the first beam just goes from there to there and out, the second beam comes in all the way through the second layer and out. This plus this distance combined is the extra distance traveled by the second beam as compared to the first beam. Now, how do we find out what that extra distance is equal to? Well, if d is the separation distance right here, and theta is the angle of incidence relative to the horizontal, notice that this angle theta here is the same as this angle theta right there, Notice that this line is perpendicular to that line, and this line is perpendicular to this line, so the angle inclusive between those two lines has to equal the angle inclusive between those two lines. So notice that this right here is equal to the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle theta since it's the opposite side to the angle. And since the beam has to travel this extra distance plus this extra distance, the extra distance is 2d sine theta. Now, if the, that extra distance is equal to a full wavelength or two wavelengths or three wavelengths, you have constructive interference. If it's equal to a half a wavelength, one and a half or two and a half, you have destructive interference. You may wonder, well, how does that work? Well, I have a picture up here that might explain it for us. Notice that we have a wave right here. We have a second wave. Let's assume that these are X-ray waves. And notice they're in, in phase. They have, they have peaks at the same time, valves at the same time, and so forth. So they're in phase. We say they have constructive interference. They can exist, coexist side by side, and we have constructive interference. Here we have a wave and a second wave. And notice when there's a peak on the one wave, there's a valley on the other. We have a valley and a peak, peak, valley, and so forth. They're exactly opposite of each other. They're basically a half a wavelength out of phase. Notice that if you move this wave over a half a wavelength, they would be back in phase. So this is called being out of phase by 180 degrees or a half a wavelength. We call that destructive interference, and the result is that they will cancel each other out and there's no detection of an X-ray at that point. So X-ray waves can destroy each other by being out of phase or can add to each other by being in phase. Even when a wave moves over one complete phase, let's say we take this this second wave right here, and we move the whole wave over by one wavelength, notice that the purple line is back in phase with the first line. So one can be a whole wavelength in front or behind the other one, and they still will be in phase. But if the difference is a half wavelength or one and a half wavelengths or two and a half wavelengths, then they're out of phase and you have destructive interference. Hence this summary right here. So all we have to do is send x-rays onto a crystalline structure, and vary the angle in such a way that we vary the extra distance because it's definitely a function of the angle theta until we get either constructive or destructive interference at the detector and from that we should be able to figure out the separation distance d because all we have to do when we have constructive interference is set do t sine theta equal to a full wavelength and we have destructive interference we can set do 2d sine theta equal to a half a wavelength and then calculate 4d knowing the angle and knowing the wavelength of the x-rays that we're using here. So that's your basic technique. Now I'll show you some examples of how to apply that to figure out how to determine the crystalline structure using x-ray diffraction techniques.